Aloha, everyone. I am your host, Winston Welch, and I am delighted that you are joining us today for this Out and About special show where we, every other week, explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization, but I'm here to highlight the special folks on my show, not me. So with that, I am delighted that today joining me in the studio is uh, Ivale Kadena, Kadena, a community engagement coordinator from the Hawaii Health and, Har and Harm. Harm Reduction Center. Uh, welcome to the show, and thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. So Happy to be here. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you here, and I've been wanting to get you guys on the show for a while. And so we're not going to have enough time today to explore everything. But tell us, what is the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center? Well, in a nutshell, I think it's um, the community's response to um, health disparities um, because of social situations. Um, we are uh, an organization that is built up of two nonprofit organizations that have been around for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. um, the Life Foundation, which started out in 1982, was um, our first, Hawaii's first response to HIV okay. in the state. And um, we were doing case management and prevention services uh, for the entire um, county of Honolulu and capacity building for across the state and the Pacific. Um, and the CHOW project, which was the Community Health Outreach Workers Project, was um, Hawaii's first needle exchange, well, the Hawaii's only needle exchange program. And we have been sister agencies for a very long time, and we actually shared office space. And um, when Life Foundation's Executive Director Paul Grosbeck made the announcement that he was planning his retirement, um, it seemed like the perfect time to join these two organizations and, um, and build on what we had both been working towards, which is really addressing the, um, the social issues and the, the social determinants of health for um, marginalized communities in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, uh, and I love the way that you put that because it's serving an under need, uh, underserved population uh, that's marginalized as well. Absolutely. And both of those organizations, uh, you know, doing real good. And you probably had a lot of overlap or some overlap in your clients. Maybe not a lot of overlap, but some. Many overlap. of our participants were um, were sharing a lot of the different programs that we were offering between the two organizations. Um, and so it was a seamless transition for some, um, and it actually made things more accessible to others. So um, it, it, it's been a perfect match, and, it, and for the most part, it's um, really going to be able to help the sustainability of, of this organization that serves um, so many different communities. And if people want to follow along uh, for your website, what is your website that they can go to for more information? You can find us at hhhrc.org. hhhrc.org. That's the one. Or they can Google Hawaii Health Ampersand and Symbol <laughs> Harm Reduction Center. Yes. And, and we know that um, change is kind of difficult for a lot of people. Even for some of us, change has been difficult. Um, we're, we're looking at it as growth. And so even if you Google Life Foundation or you Google the Child Project, yep. if you're comfortable with those former organizations, you'll still find the information about Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction. Yeah, I would say keep those up for a number of years because people still talk about, um, you know, Dye or... Uh, um, uh, oh, yeah, I still call Mart. it Holiday Mart. Right. <laughs> so we have Showing long memories. Showing my age memories. right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you can tell who, who moved to Hawaii when, what, what you call it. Um, so some of your services that you offer, and your, your building is sort of... Uh, what is the name of that building anyway, or does it have a name? Well, we've always called it the old Gold Bond Building. Okay. I think it's now called 677 Ala Moana. Okay, the old Gold Bond Building, but, for those I, of you but historically, know. everybody just knows it as the old Gold Bond Building. Okay, yeah. and it's just right in Kaka'ako, Makai, um, sort of right in front of the, the or, or caddy corner to the, the medical, the John Burns Medical School, is that right? Uh, we're a block away from John Burns School of Medicine, and we're right across the street from Salt, from which is, Salt. yeah, the, the new Kaka'ako. Um, the social complex gathering place. Okay, and you, you offer a whole bunch, a whole range of services there. 
um, that uh, we will we'll touch on today, but I would like to um, There's so many. get into there those. Is. So one of those, your, your main things, and as, as people can see on your website, is that you have um, an, an outreach section, and that, that includes needle exchange, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe syringe exchange, you might call it. Right. What, how does that work? So the syringe exchange program is a, a very simple program. It's first off, it's anonymous. Um, we know we need to make it accessible to the communities that um, that use injection needles, um, and so it is an anonymous program. We have a, a process where our participants would sign up for a card, um, and they would just be given a num given a number, and they use that number in order to exchange needles. And it's a one for one process, meaning you bring in one, we give you one. Will you give us five? We'll give you five. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really based around the, the concepts of harm reduction. Um, we know that we're not able to change everyone's behaviors, but we can make it safer and less risk um, by supplying the, the things that can be harmful. So a lot of people say, oh, no, I don't, we shouldn't do that. Like, uh, let's say our current vice president, right? And so we saw a massive... HIV outbreak in southern Indiana when uh, I think there, if there wasn't a needle exchange it was shut down or it was HIV testing that was shut down and then mm -hmm. folks that were injecting uh, drugs suddenly they had an explosion of HIV yes. cases. So tell us what is harm reduction and how does that for people for, for the, the people that say oh no we shouldn't be promoting drug use I don't think you're pro you're not promoting drug use you're reducing harm or the, the or, 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 or is that right, right? or how Absolutely. would you say that? It's it's looking at the risks involved and seeing, okay, so this is the community and this is what they are doing yeah. and we're not trying to preach or trying to sell some type of dream that we can erase these issues mm -hmm. off of the planet. But we, if we know that these things are going to be happening, can't we provide the safest methods possible to keep these people um, as healthy and living as well as possible? Um, and that's the concept, is meeting the, the participant where they're at, yes. no matter what they're doing in life, yep. um, the services are needed. And if there's nobody here to provide the service, then it could, be, it could cause harm, more harm to that person. And the community at large. And the community at large. And it's, rec it's interesting that you brought up the Indiana situation because um, way before HIV was there, a hepatitis C breakout was happening oh. for a long time, and, and it wasn't addressed. Um, and if those concepts of harm reduction and providing the services that could um, assist these people in, in their lifestyles, um, there possibly didn't have to be that HIV outbreak because the signs were already there. Or even hep C. And, and I think that the, the thing behind that is it's not only the right thing to do as humans, is to help, you know, I, I, I often am on a, kind of on a soapbox, so, we are our brothers and sisters keepers. To, and, and when we stop doing that, then we see what we have now, which is an explosion of homelessness and all the, mm -hmm. the ills because we said, oh, no, I'm not, not going to participate. But the, the problem is real because then it affects everybody, not just the individual. But we do have an obligation to help one another. We're a civilization, and that's what we do. And when we don't do that, it causes more harm. So we're reducing the harm, but it's also the financially responsible thing to do. If people can't look at it from the human perspective, they can look at it as for every person who does not contract hep C or HIV or mm -hmm. something else, or is able, in fact, to get into treatment through your programs and become a productive member of society again, then we're actually being really um, wise financially mm -hmm. as well, not just from the, the human level, which is where we should really be. With so many of the different programs that we're, that we're doing, including our law enforcement assisted diversion program, um, pre-treatment, substance abuse counseling, HIV case management, and hep C management, um, all of these programs are keeping the state you know, away from extra finances like incarceration um, and, and medical issues and whatnot. So, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. It, like all the, all the way around, it's helping the community. Um, but most of all, it's helping the, the individual themselves. And um, harm reduction practices have been, have been going on for so many years, and it's proven that it, um, it actually uh, helps to 
you know, relieve a person of their substance abuse issues um, over time. Yes. So, so they have a place that they can come in. They can have some uh, needle exchange. They can have some counseling mm -hmm. in a non-judgmental atmosphere. We and see. HIV and hep C testing as well. HIV and hep C testing. And by the way, if you are over 50, if you're born before 19, 1965, isn't it? Everyone is supposed to be tested for hep C, aren't they? Uh, yes, the, ba the baby boomers. The is, baby boomers yeah. until 65. Like, it, it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. Go get tested for hep C, and you can get that done for free yes. at your clinic, at, which is open basically, or when are your testing hours? So our testing hours in office is Monday through Friday okay. from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's at our 677 Ala Moana location. And, um, and we also do outreach testing. So we provide mobile testing. You can contact us through the website, hhhrc.org. Um, or we have outreach workers that are, take, are visiting different parts, various parts of the island every day, Monday through Friday. Oh, you do. So uh, you're having people that are even going out to Waianae or up to the North Shore or to Mo'ili'ili or? If the, if the call comes in, yes. OK. And so you mentioned, uh, uh, let's see, um, not pre-prison, but uh, pre-incarceration. Or how did you phrase that? What's that program? Uh, it's called the LEAD program, the Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion. Law Enforcement yeah. Assisted Diversion program. It's Hawaii's pilot program. Um, we. I don't have a lot of the statistic information for, the, for that, that particular program, but it has been a big help with the, um, the homeless population mm -hmm. as well as um, the crime in, uh, that happens around Chinatown. And is that tied into the drug court, do you know? Um, is that how that works? Or, or is it basically saying instead of putting you into the prison program, let's, let's uh, see if we can't help you meet your needs right here where you're at. Um, it's, it's something similar to that, but there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of components that need to be in place. It's a referral process, and okay. so the lead officer would have to be on duty in order for that process to start happening. I see. So it's Lead a, meaning the program lead. Okay, so, yeah. so I can't call up and say, uh, my kid's being a brat here, can you do something with her or something <laughs> like that? Okay, that, that's not what it's about. Um, maybe our next program. And, uh, maybe our next program. <laughs> And let's see, so you've got also wound care, uh, yeah. which, uh, sorry, I didn't shut off my phone, which is terrible. Uh, you've got wound care. Tell us about wound care. What is wound care? I will say that um, places like Kuakini Hospital Emergency Room and Queens Hospital Emergency Room um, and Kapiolani Hospital Emergency Room would would um, applaud and cheer and standing ovation of this wound care program. Dr. Christina Wang, um, she joined us. Well, she joined the Child Project, and so she was part of the merge. And she does outreach on Tuesdays and Fridays in the downtown Chinatown area. And um, she meets the clients where they're at. And wound care is a really, really important part of staying healthy, um, especially if you um, are, are houseless. And she is um, a remarkable individual, plus a, just a, a really great doctor. And, and she, um, she started this pilot program of wound care. And she, you'll just find her at Fort Street Mall and River Street. And she um, changes the dressing on um, a lot of wounds. And you see a lot of um, things like cellulitis and staph infections and, and things like that. And, and those need constant care in order to heal. And, um, for a lot of the participants that we work with, you know, healing is not a really um, easy thing to do when you're out in the streets. And so she goes out there to make sure that those things are clean. And um, we've recently um, added a clinic to our office. And so when she's not in outreach, she, she can be found in the clinic doing a wound care along with her staff. Is that funded hopefully by Queens or by uh, some sort of grant uh, from the, the state uh, health department or something like that? We do work through a few different grants and a lot of donations. And I know that recently Queens Hospital donated some supplies for the wound care program. And it diverts yeah. a huge amount of folks going, showing up in the emergency room at, at their hospital. I, I watched a presentation that Dr. Wang did recently, and I think that it was... Um, I, don't, I couldn't say the, the, the number, but it is a, a significant number of money being saved by the hospital from this, pro, this program, okay. which well, is why they're like, 
cheering us on God. for this wound care. <laughs> well, it's, She's it's, become a really, um, a, a really an, an angel to a lot of the emergency rooms. You know, and that's what it's all about is, is, is your organization is exactly the kind that I like to highlight. You're in our, uh, filled with people doing good for members of our community, especially those who are down, uh, downtrodden and, and need some uh, tender loving care. So uh, we have to take a short break. We will be sure. back in a minute. Uh, we are talking with uh, Kiva Lay uh, Cadena of the uh, Community Engor Engagement Coordinator at the Hawaii Health oh. and Harm Reduction Center. It's a lot. It's, it's a mouthful. It's a lot. And uh, <laughs> we'll be back for more of the story in a minute. So stay tuned. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha, we're back, we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We are talking with Kiva Le Cadena from the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center, where she is Community Engagement Coordinator. And uh, this is a terrific organization doing a lot of good in our community, helping people that a lot of people uh, don't... Uh, Overlook. They, want, uh, they what? Overlook. Overlook and want yeah. to overlook and just kind of, oh, I don't want to deal with that and I don't know how to deal with that. And, and mm -hmm. you, you guys are right on the front line. I think... A really big part of the dedication that our organization um, has is because we come from the community as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have staff that are in recovery. We have staff that are living with HIV. We, are, we have staff that are formerly homeless, former sex workers. Um, you name it and you can find someone that's relatable to you in our organization. And what that really does is it's inviting to people that have sometimes come very suspicious of, of help mm -hmm. um, and very suspicious of people that are reaching out. Um, and so we take pride in our life experiences and we use them to, to, um, to promote the things that we want to do for our community here in Hawaii. So. That's really important is that, you, that, that, your, that your staff can relate to people. And even if they're not uh, coming from those specific backgrounds, they're very it's certainly uh, sympathetic uh, people to, to um, your clients that you serve and yes. people that are walking in off the street and probably afraid just to even get an HIV test. And uh, you do offer HIV tests and it is the rapid testing. So you get the results in about 15 or 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. It's a very simple process. You come in, you fill out a consent form, um, and we uh, just need a little prick on the fingertip, mm -hmm. and um, you'll get your results in 20 minutes. We do a small little risk assessment to see what other programs you might benefit from with mm -hmm. our organization, including our smoking cessation and our PrEP program. Um, PrEP is a pro preventative medication for what HIV. What is PrEP? Tell us what PrEP is, because people may not know what PrEP is. Pre-exposure prophylaxis. And so what PrEP really is, is I call it the birth control pill for HIV. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who might be at high risk for exposure, um, it's a daily medication that can be taken. And it really prepares the body in case there was some type of exposure. The body knows how to fight off the infection or the virus, and um, the virus dies off before it can, can um, replicate. Replicate, so exactly. It's, it's, it's almost, uh, it's, it's as far as I've seen, it's, it's as close as it can get to 
uh, perfect prevention if people are, are regular with it. There's been a couple of cases I think that have been uh, where, where it didn't work, but most of the time it's uh, it's an amazing drug, and that is yes. typically available at uh, if you have insurance. It's probably covered by insurance here in Hawaii. Um, and for people that can't afford it or don't have insurance, do you have a program that covers them for that? So our prep navigation program helps to set that up, and so we don't only help people that get connected to prep. We want to make it reachable to that mm -hmm. person as well. And so we have the process. Um, we have staff that is able to help navigate through the application of insurance benefits, whether it be through Quest or through employment or um, through private insurance. And, um, and even if they decide they, do, they don't want prep, um, we're still making sure that the community is connected to health care. Um, and yes, it's, um, it's, PrEP is usually covered by private insurance and by Quest. Um, not usually, but it is always okay. um, by Quest. And um, it can be an expensive process, and PrEP navigation can help find other avenues in order to make that as, uh, as you know, that PrEP as easy as possible to and it, And again, I think this is where the ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. So if you yes. don't know about PrEP, just Google PrEP and... P R E P. Um, it's a it's a great thing that you've got. You uh, you offer this testing and then some counseling, and you mentioned um, smoking in there because yes, as I think we don't even realize, but people think oh, if, 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 age is if, age is uh, is the big killer, <laughs> but it's actually smoking is is the big killer still. I think isn't it? Um, and not only that is that, you know we reached out into all of these different um, lifestyle habits because we realized that um, HIV was prevalent in smokers. We realized that HIV was a high risk for transgender people. We realized that, you know, substance use and injection drug use is um, addressing the harm reduction in those areas is, a re is prevention. Um, and so it all kind of ties in together with really the all around health of a participant. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're really proud of the, the Hawaii's Last Drag program. That's what we called it. We thought it was a cute play on words sure. for the LGBT community. It is yeah. LGBT focused. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, we offer a lot of tools and incentive and support around um, smoking cessation. We've recently been connected with substance abuse programs to help um, get people started while they're in, in drug treatment. And so it's a good avenue to like kind of clean slate yourself. So it's a really good um, program that we've been, we've been doing for like the last two years. I that think. is awesome. And, and yeah. it's, it's interesting because probably if somebody can stop smoking, they can stop some other harmful behaviors too or start on healthier behaviors as well. I found, um, being in recovery myself, I found that um, you get on that, that, that lifestyle change and that new design and you kind of want to like do everything and just you're like you're on this like it's this mission to like do well for yourself and so what a, it's a great opportunity to kind of explore other ways to be healthy and smoking cessation is one of them so. yeah smoking cessation is one of them and uh yes so and, and and smoking i think the lgbt community is is like twice as prevalent for smoking isn't it as the regular population or something along those lines i don't know the, the exact um data but but yeah it's, it's there is there. a lot of smokers. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're, uh, we're Hawaii's last drag. So as you go in there, you have some maybe uh, counseling or the patch or mm -hmm. uh, different ways of acupuncture. <laughs> I, I liked the gum the most. I, so okay. I was a part of the smoking cessation program myself. Okay. Um, and my favorite um, tool was the, the gum because I needed to taste a cigarette. And okay. so, it, yeah. But we have lozenges. We have um, there, uh, we, the patch. Um, cinnamon sticks because some people just need to hold something in their mouth. And, yes. So yeah. Is that is that free? Is a free program if people need to help? With the, that? All of our programs are free. We don't charge our participants. Um, none of our participants need to spend money in our organization. If, if they come for an H, HIV test or a, a hepatitis C test, it's all free. Right. Okay. And uh, then tell us about the Kua Ana Project uh, Awareness Kua Ana Project. It's my shirt right there. The okay. Kua Ana Project. Um, so the Kua Ana in Hawaiian, it stands for older sibling, so like a big brother or a big sister. Okay. And really, it was it, it's looked at as a mentor program. Um, you know, in the country, 28% of transgender women will test positive for HIV. That's, that's, the, that's the numbers. 
And um, when it comes to transgender women of color, the numbers are much higher. Yeah. Um, and we recognize that um, improving the quality of life for transgender people would be a really important tool in, in order to kind of reduce that harm around HIV. Um, and so the Kuana project started about five years ago through grant and aid from the state. Mm -hmm. And um, we offer a lot of opportunities for uh, personal growth and support around um, legal documentation like the name change process and the gender marker change process. You know, you supply someone with the tools to feel comfortable in their skin and feel empowered by their documents and by their personal surroundings. Yeah. Um, they're bound to make different choices when it comes to lifestyle. Yep. Um, and so instead of, say, dropping out of high school, maybe this person is going to go on to college because they've, their gender marker is the same as their gender identity or mm -hmm. their name is, is the same as how they identify. Um, it makes things a lot more reachable for a community that's, that's been widely underserved in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I have a lot to say about it because I'm a transgender woman as well. And, and, um, and I needed that, that help um, with the name change process 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I needed that help with, I just aged myself again, didn't I? No. I needed that help with um, understanding how to, to complete the documents and, and those types of things. And so young trans people today and setting that up for them really gives them avenues to kind of explore other things in life, including careers and, um, and higher education. Yeah. Um, reducing the harm around HIV and drugs and sex work and all kinds of things that can be harmful. And we have so many, so many uh, LGBTQIA youth on the streets that are kicked out of their houses, forced out of their houses, yeah, and absolutely. so uh, and they need that support. They need that support, and so you, so you're kind of a older sister mentor, right? Uh, and, right. And you've got a whole walking wide them, range. walking these people through um, how to apply for. Um, the name change process, which can, which can be daunting, yeah. which, uh, which requires a lot of, of um, you know, follow-ups yeah. and a lot of, you know... And support. Emotional support. Emotional support. Yeah. Um, I, not too long ago, I went to a, um, a name change ceremony for one of our participants who actually had um, this ceremony where... He blessed his name in, in the church around all of his friends, and, and everybody was there to support him and, and, and really mark the day um, with significance. And it was important to him so that he could um, you know, move on in his transition and his process. It's a really empowering thing to be able to self-identify and then have others understand and see that. And witness and support it. And witness and support it, yeah. And I think that's a, a, a perfect way to, to end um, the show because we're unfortunately out of time. But We could go on for hours. We can, I'm sure. and you will come back and be my guest again, I hope, Love in the to. future. And sure. that, just that, uh, that support and, and, and real sense of aloha that you bring to your work, obviously, yeah, and, you. and your coworkers do that. And, you're, uh, I, I really respect the work that you do personally you and, and, that your, and that your coworkers do and that your organization does. Um, I will give a shout out that we do have the AIDS Walk on June 30th. You can find more information yes. at HonoluluAidsWalk.org or you can go to Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center where you can probably also somehow uh, hook in and find Kivale uh, Kadena who has you can find uh, me there. is as our community engagement coordinator who has been on our show today, and I am so thankful that you've come on the show. I look forward to you to coming back and thank you for having talking us. some more about this because you, you, you know, you're doing such important and valuable work. So We're a family of, of um, love and support there. So, well, yeah, thank, thank you. you for that. And unfortunately, folks, we are all out of time. Another fantastic organization that you have been able to hear about only on Out and About Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. Share this with your friends. Share this with your peeps that you love. Uh, because that's what it's all about. So, you know what? I'll see you here in a couple of weeks, but uh, share the aloha, be kind to each other, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Robert McLean, floor manager, Eric Calendar, Calander, and to Jay Vitale, our executive director, who puts it all together. Aloha.